Moolah La is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. The Swimming Pool. On a hot summer's day, there is almost nothing better. And if you are lucky enough to own one, you love it when you're in it, amazing. But you can't be in it 24 seven. So maybe, just maybe, you might wanna use that pool for some extra cash. There is a company called Swimply that uh, helps you rent out your pool by the hour. Part of a broader trend over the course of the last 10 years that has brought us really the Airbnb of almost everything. First apartments, now cars, bikes, parking spots, and pools. Bonham Laskin is the creator of Swimply. He joins us now to talk about how it works. Hello there. Hey, thanks for having me. Where did this idea come from? Did you just say, okay, Airbnb of everything, and you looked at your toaster and said no, and you looked at your winter coat and said no, and then you saw a pool and went, yes, that's it. Um, I want I want to say that it was a process of reduction, but it was actually kind of like a, a form of a survival at the time. I'm uh, the oldest of 12, so I have uh, nine younger sisters and two younger brothers. And in the summer of 2018, my mother welcomed my youngest sibling to the family. And uh, coming from a family that uh, never really had much, we never really had the means to travel or send anyone away for camp. The moment summer hit, you can imagine all 12 of us under the age of 21 at the time in a, a five-bedroom house was not super um, welcoming for everyone's sanity. But my neighbor built the pool, and uh, she barely used it. And I kind of uh, offered to help her with her expenses in exchange for my family using it when her grandkids were not over, which was often. And uh, yeah, yeah, we started using it within two weeks. Five other families were doing the same thing. Um, and uh, I figured maybe I can help other people monetize their swimming pool. Um, so, wow. And, and in your family, it wouldn't be just pleasure. I can imagine it being like a core part of mental health for 12 kids having that option. For my mom, more than anyone, yeah. Yeah. Who lifeguarded? My mom and myself, actually. Okay. Wow. Okay. So give us the, give us the essence. How does this work for um, the host? Uh, how does this work for the renter? Yeah. Uh, so we make this uh, for both sides, um, especially because it's so new. Uh, for the owner, it takes around five minutes. Uh, you have a swimming pool that you are very proud of, that you feel like you can make um, more use out of it and bring more joy to people. Uh, you visit swimply.com or you download our Swimply app on the iOS or Android store. Uh, you Upload a couple of photos. Uh, the owners are in charge of all the rules. So how many people are allowed? How many kids are allowed? Are kids allowed? Are pets allowed? You decide your own price, when your pool is available, when it's not. Um, we, it's your pool. It's your rules. We'll give you full control of how to run, of how to run it. Um, and then you're available for viewing by local swimmers um, in the area. For swimmers, it's even easier. Uh, you put in your location. We'll show you pools nearby. You can filter by barbecue having shallow areas, uh, hot tubs, a lot of different amenities. And then once you find the perfect pool, you see exactly when it's available uh, and you book it by the hour. Um, pools start from 25 bucks an hour all the way to $200 an hour. Um, and uh, yeah, once you book it, you get an email of how to get in and how to get out. It's like an entirely self-serve process. And uh, it's a win-win for everyone. How do hosts ensure that their property is protected? And this is a question that the Airbnb of anything would be relevant for. We've Airbnb'd our house. It was largely good, but we had one really bad experience. I'm sure that's a question in the back of people's minds as they choose to put their pool on Swimply. Absolutely. And I would say that like we did our best to not reinvent the wheel on this one. Um, as you mentioned, a lot of people came before us. Um, and so obviously we have a two-sided uh, review system. Every owner gets reviewed by every guest. Every guest gets reviewed by um, every owner after every experience. Um, we do do um, a lot of security checks on users. Uh, we also do provide protection on our own. So we do uh, definitely step up and provide the necessary coverage um, to fill in the gaps. So we provide up to $2 million um, on liability coverage and up to $10,000 in property damage. Um, what's really cool about Swimply is that it's um, all outdoors. So unlike you know something like Airbnb where they're coming inside and there's a lot more potential exposure over here, it's all outdoors. It's the average amount of people are only five to seven guests um, mm -hmm. that come in and the average experience is only two hours long. So even though we've put over a million people in people's backyards so far, um, it's been an extremely smooth experience. Who cleans the pool? The pool does majority of the work. Um, it's kind of how they uh, tend to be designed. And so 
that's another really cool thing about Spoonplay is that uh, majority of the time, uh, most owners don't even know um, that, that a guest was there. Um, maybe they leave a pizza box behind, and that's a rare occurrence. Right. Um, and so the cluing does 99% of the job. Um, for larger events that people tend to host, uh, the owners would tend to tackle on an additional cleaning fee. So I guess that is, is the host usually home or not home at the time? It's definitely a mix. Um, at first, uh, it was generally only owners that were not home. They were renting out to pool there at work. Uh, but there are a lot of owners in the platform that love the hospitality element of it all and actually greet the guests and give them a tour of all the areas, sign them up to the Wi-Fi, show them how to work the speaker. Marco, Polo. I would just be, please tell me you know that game. Come on, you got to know Marco Polo. I'm kind of a guru when it comes to pool games at this point. So I believe it. You must know all those games. If I were to host, I would I would have to prevent myself from getting too actively engaged in the way that activity came to be. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can imagine a lot of owners probably have a lot of FOMO um, when, while they're renting out. Their games. Yeah, everybody's having such a great time. What are the rules in general on um, alcohol and drugs? Uh, we make it entirely up to the owners. So we really. Uh, you can look at it almost like we produce, we're giving them all, we're giving, as a pool owner, we're giving you all the tools that you would need to rent out exactly what you're comfortable to and what you're, and make sure that, you know, you don't get any experiences that you're not comfortable with. Um, there are pools in LA that advertise themselves as 420 friendly. Um, we keep it entirely up to the owner um, to decide what they want to host. Um, I was raised with a backyard pool, but my, uh, when the heater broke, my dad just decided he wasn't going to fix it. So we were not a very popular destination in a Canadian summer without a heater, not super cool. But one thing my mom was nuts about was lifeguarding. Um, if I were to rent out my pool, that would be in the back of my mind at all times, even if the insurance and liability was all taken care of. I just don't know how I would live my, with myself if an accident occurred on my property. How do you address that fear for hosts? Absolutely. So, I mean, we tend, we do specify exactly on the, when uh, you accept the reservation, who are the adults and who are the kids who needs to be who, who's supervised and who is, needs to be supervised. Um, we do uh, educate our swimmers pretty much on designating somebody at all times to be the one that is watching over uh, the experience. What's really cool about Swimplay is that because the experience is so limited to uh, generally around two to three hours, uh, majority of pool accidents happen from, you know, uh, distraction and people not supervising But because it is limited to a short amount of time. And because it's limited to a small amount of people, mm -hmm. um, the engagement is always extremely high and the supervision is always extremely easy. Um, so that's, t that tends to be um, the natural use case is just profoundly um, more safe than alternatives. What are the economics for the host? So with all these other, um, you know, examples that we've talked about, there is a fee that goes to uh, the Swimply equivalent. What's that fee in your case? The owners keep 85% um, right now and they charge um, whatever they would like. Canada is a great pool country in certain parts of the country and at certain times of the year. I did go online. I see that Swimply is here and active. Is there any um, regional nuance that you have observed for Canada or for colder climates in particular? Well, overall, I would say Canada was a big surprise to us. Uh, we launched in Canada by accident, actually. Um, so we were, our first city was, uh, was in New York. And then we just got so much demand from Canada that uh, somebody there thought we already launched there. Um, and so they said that we launched there. And so our demand like already, that was already coming so high, tripled. And so we just decided to make it available um, overnight in the area. And it's grown to be one of our top 10 markets. And we're over, we're over, we're in 130 cities right now. So um, I would say that Canada overall has been explosive, uh, specifically Toronto and this past year, Montreal um, as well. So I can't, say that like we saw that coming so much considering uh, what you just mentioned of uh, the weather and the time of year but it sounds like when people can swim they're going to swim at all costs and this was a great solution for them what what have you learned about the conversations that a pool owner needs to have with their neighbors because um you know again airbnb can be awesome for the host it can be not so awesome for their neighbors sometimes yeah, uh, we actually have, um, we, we figured this out really quickly and really early on, considering it's this whole Swimply experience started with my literally next door neighbor. Mm. Um, and then it was constantly being used by the neighbors nearby. Um, and so it definitely has um, an influence on the neighborhood. The, in order actually to sign up as a host, you have to agree to our 
it's we have a dedicated walkthrough of our neighbor friendly policies, which actually mandate that you speak to your neighbor around how often you can rent out, how late you can rent out, how many cars they'll pool with, parking on the streets, um, and whatnot. So again, we do. There's so much we can do as a platform other than educate everyone to the best of our ability. And then we give a portal for neighbors to report their um, neighbors who oh, do wow. not abide by our rules. Does it include video upload capability? Um, we request it um, afterwards. So you report in, you, you give us your address, you give us your neighbor's address, and you let us know um, if they A, had the conversation with you, if they did not have the conversation with you, and if they had the conversation with you and violated the rules. I meant, we, so the, I meant so the neighbors could upload their creeping video of, oh my God, they're horrible. I can't believe they let this happen. We tend to ask for that, actually. So if there's, a, if there's a, some incidents that are, you know, something we would not be proud of commentating on the platform, we will ask the neighbor to send us any videos that they have. Right. Um, oh um, so with an apartment, there's controlled access by way of maybe a camera or a code. Most pools have a gate, maybe a lock. How does entry work for a, for a renter? Uh, this is actually why it worked so well, I would say, even during the pandemic. Um, when you book a pool, 100% of our pools and 100% of the pools that we've ever seen uh, allow side entrance to the backyard, mainly because when people build a swimming pool, it is a social investment. Mm -hmm. And when you want to have friends over or throw a party for your kid, you don't necessarily want them all walking through your house. So um, the natural design of most pools is that people have access uh, to the side entrance. Um, owners charge by tier, so 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. Um, and so it tends to, you guests will tend to bring a guest or two extra or a guest or, a guest or two less. Um, and that's generally okay. Um, the owners are home, um, around 60 to 70% of the time. So they're generally the ones, um, supervising how many people are there. And if guests do show up with more guests than they claim to have come with, then we, uh, we actually have fines in place for that. Right. Um, and if they're not home, is it, uh, here's the, here's the keypad code to get into my backyard or do you just leave the door open? Even if they are home, that tends to be how it works. Uh, going through the left side, enter in three, four, seven, eight, and then walk right. in through uh, the backyard and leave it as you found it. Um, as, as you know, this is a show about money. Do you find that your hosts, uh, what is the order of priority in terms of their why? Are they doing it for the money? Are they doing it to be social? I mean, at 75 bucks an hour in a Canadian summer, you'd have to be pretty booked in order to, for that to be a significant part of your income. So they definitely start off. The, the, from what I've seen, and I've spoken to dozens of us at this point in my life, um, uh, it generally starts off with, hey, I'm spending so much on my pool. Let me just rent it out enough to like, for the pool to be free and maybe even pay for the heating and you know if there's a cool reservation so generally it doesn't even start about the money as much as having the pool pay for itself or upgrades so they already have in mind what the money's going to go towards um and then two things either happen at that point either they become so extremely popular and they're starting to earn six figures like several of our hosts and it just becomes so simple and lucrative even if you want to be a casual host you can earn two to three thousand dollars a month so, and then they just become addicted just from the amount of money that they're earning, or they get addicted to the amount of joy they're providing. Um, around one third of our owners say that one of their biggest motivators on and why they're so happy with Swimplay is being able to just provide joy to people that don't wow. maybe have the same access as them. I can see that. Bonham, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Bonham Laskin is the creator of Swimply. It, I mean, it, I, it's oversimplified, but it really is an Airbnb of the backyard pool. If you've got one, you can make some money on the side. And if you want access to one, you can go online and see where a Swimply pool might be available near you.